My name is Greg Stone, and I want the world to know that the oceans are the most valuable feature on Earth. I've spent my life uh, in the ocean. I uh, started out watching Jacques Cousteau documentaries when I was seven or eight years old with my mask and flippers on in front of the TV set. <laughs> and about 20 years ago, I was diving in the Sea of Japan in a submarine, and we got down to 18,000 feet. Once we arrived, we were looking at a place that had not seen the light of day for 3.5 billion years. It was a very ancient place on Earth. The sun had never shone there, but we found plastic all over the, all over the seafloor. The, the oceans are the largest uh, habitat on the planet. They are the life support system of the planet. They allow us to breathe, they feed us, they create a pressurized atmosphere so that we can, we can live in a relatively stable environment. And this reminds me that a couple of years ago, I had a meeting with my good friend, Bill Wrigley, who was the CEO of the Wrigley Gum Confectionery Company. Bill loves the ocean and began talking to me about how to save the ocean. And he challenged me. He said, Greg, how do I know if you're making progress? How do we put business thinking into the environment? And I said, well, Bill, you're right. We have not been very well organized. The environmental community, and I'm one of them, has been fractured over the years. You get one group that wants to save coral reefs, another group that wants to save tuna, another group that wants to save sharks. And while they're all very important groups, there's not yet been a, an analysis to say, which are the most important? Which do you save first? What percentage of effort and money should you put into each of those? Decision makers are confused about what is the most important priority, what is the second priority, what is the last priority. We need to work together. We need the genius of the business community to help solve this problem and solve other problems. So Bill and I and Bud and others realized that we needed to consolidate all this information into an ocean health index. The Ocean Health Index will, for the first time, prioritize all ocean threats and all the remedial measures that society can take to mitigate those threats in a fashion that can be used very strategically to uh, implement ocean conservation programs. It'll be like a report card, or like the Dow Jones Industrial Average of the ocean. A team of scientists is picking all the key indicators that need to be looked at, coastal protection, fishing, public participation, we're looking at the socioeconomic aspects of this, and deeply analyzing them. We'll be tracking uh, pollutants with the Ocean Health Index, not just oil, oil's important, but we'll also be looking at reactive nitrogen, phosphorus, and other synthetic chemicals in the ocean, and we'll be weighting them appropriately so that a decision maker can say, if I've only got this much money and I've got these pollutants, which one should I stop putting into the ocean first? We will be able to come up with one number each year that shows society's progress globally on the oceans on our most important asset. We need to get the we need to get ocean issues mainstream in the world of, of economics and politics. And I think the Ocean Health Index will be that bridge. And it will enable decision makers and the public to understand how important the oceans are and make sure that we take care of them with our decisions.